Good morning, happy Sabbath, and welcome to Adult Sabbath School from Fairmont Seventh-day Adventist Church here in Lodi, California. My name is David Smith, and happy Independence Day. Uh, we are starting a brand new series of uh, lesson studies uh, about making friends for God, not just making friends with Him or making friends of Him, but making friends for Him. Before we get started into our lesson study this morning, um, let us go before the throne of grace in a brief word of prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we come to you this Sabbath morning, giving you praise and honor and glory as we celebrate the anniversary of, this, of the founding of this great nation. Father, you have blessed us beyond measure. And yet, in many corners of this country, we have turned our backs on you. Father, as we open our hearts and our minds and our Bibles in study this morning, we want to ask a prayer of healing and forgiveness for our country and, and prayers of forgiveness for ourselves for the things that we've done. We ask for your continued blessing upon us as a people and upon us as children of God. We ask that you would open our minds and our hearts to receive the truths that you have prepared for us this morning. And we also pray for a rapid conclusion to this COVID-19 uh, pandemic so that we can all come safely back into your house to worship openly without fear of uh, governmental interference or fear of catching a, a disease and, and possibly dying from. Father, we ask for your blessing here this morning, and we give you the praise in the name of your blessed Son, Jesus. Amen. When God created this world, He created us uh, human beings as the last act of creation. We were created to be friends with God. He didn't create us to be some mindless robots for Him to boss around. He created us to have friends to talk to, to talk with, to walk with. Uh, as the book of Genesis records, uh, God walking with Adam and Eve in the garden in the cool of the evening, speaking with them friend to friend. That's why God created us. But when man fell from grace by disobeying God, we were separated from him. And our lives as humans took a terrible turn. Ever since then, 6,000 years or so ago, mankind has been looking to get back what he lost, which was peace, which was happiness, joy. And in these past 6,000 years, man has looked at a multitude of different sources to find the peace that we lost. Uh, in today's society, uh, many people look at uh, material goods, whether it be monetary wealth or houses or boats or cars uh, as a source of uh, peace or happiness. Uh, some people look at uh, family as a source of happiness. Um, man has looked at a whole array of things just to try to find a meaning for life. Uh, that's one of the, the great the, um, questions of great thinkers, great minds, is what's the purpose of life? What's the meaning of life? Um, and without God... There is no life. Um, if we look at family 
as our source of happiness. What happens if our families are taken from us, whether through uh, disease or age or accident or catastrophe? Uh, many people who have lost family members in, in any of those ways uh, have often said, my life is over. I, I might as well go out and kill myself or whatever uh, because their happiness no longer exists because their family uh, no longer exists. Or uh, in 1929 when, when the stock market crashed and, and the, uh, the beginnings of the Great Depression took hold, uh, many rich businessmen took their own lives because of everything that they had lost. They had lost their wealth. They had lost their status. They had lost their uh, companies and, and what have you. We place emphasis on happiness on the wrong things. Where our happiness truly comes from, our joy comes from, comes from He who gave us life, and that is God. When we give our lives to God, He is more than ready to accept us because He has paid the price for our redemption through His Son Jesus dying for us. So we have life because Jesus died. But not just died, He rose again to establish us, to establish our redemption with the Father. When we live a life of Christ, or live a life for Christ, we are reminded, actually we are encouraged, we are exhorted to share that which we have, that which we have been given. Um, the Apostle Paul, when he was uh, entering a city, uh, encountered a beggar. And I could be wrong. Maybe it was, the, maybe it was uh, Peter. Anyway, um, they encountered this man at the gate of a city begging alms. And Peter says to him, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So this, this beggar, this lame man, was given something of much more value than money. And Peter gave out not of himself, but gave out of what he was given by God, which was the grace and the power of God for life. I'm a bit of a sports fan. And I also have a tendency to watch the reactions of people when, when I go to a sporting event, whether uh, it's, it was a football game or a basketball game or a baseball game or an auto race, uh, all of which uh, I enjoy. And whenever the home team would, would score a touchdown or would hit a home run or uh, a basketball player would uh, put up a Hail Mary shot from uh, way, way out and just drain a three-point shot. The crowd would just go up in arms and, and just bedlam, total uproar uh, in stadiums that hold tens of thousands of people and just uh, noise beyond belief just from uh, a, a touchdown or a home run or your favorite race car driver uh, passing someone or winning the race or what have you. What do you think the reaction is in heaven when one person accepts God's gift of salvation through the death of His Son? They say, yes, Jesus, I accept you into my life as my personal Savior. 
and I ask you to forgive me and take me into your arms as your child. How do you think heaven reacts when that one person says, forgive me, Lord? If you can think of these sports stadiums in, in a total uproar because of uh, your favorite team scoring, the reaction in heaven is amplified innumerable times. All of heaven is cheering and standing and doing the wave and welcoming that one soul into the fellowship of Christ. Now, does God need our help in order to um, facilitate uh, a person accepting Christ as their Savior? No, He doesn't need us. He could do all of this on His own. Matter of fact, uh, witness, uh, I'm sorry, missions is God's primary purpose. He doesn't need us, but He wants us. That is our responsibility as His children is to share the grace that God has given to us with other people so that God can share His grace with them. Um, he gave uh, His disciples, His people, His followers, uh, a set of marching orders. Um, and what He told them, to, and what He tells us, uh, is that we are lights to a fallen generation. Uh, when he was speaking through his prophets to his chosen people, he told them that he would make them lights to the Gentiles. And by extension, lights to us as Christians. When we are given his grace, when we are shown his mercy, if we don't share what we've been given, we become basically human versions of the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is um, a very low-level sea over in uh, Israel. Uh, the Jordan River flows into it. This sea, this body of water, is uh, on record as the lowest body of water in the world. And not low by, you know, not by being not very deep, but low as in the, the surface of this lake is over 1,300 feet below sea level. That is low. And there is no outlet for this sea. The salt and mineral content of the Dead Sea makes up one-third of its contents. It, nothing lives there except maybe some bacteria and some microscopic microbes. But there is no life at all in the Dead Sea because everything that flows into it, but nothing flows out. We as Christians, if we don't share what God has given us. If God gives us His blessings, but none of those blessings come out of us to other people, we become flesh and blood versions of the Dead Sea. We become, for all intents and purposes, we become useless to God. We become lukewarm. And God would rather wish that we were hot or cold because of the lukewarm He's going to spew out of His mouth. And the word spew actually is a very strong word. Um, I don't know if you've uh, heard or know of what a spit take is, but when you watch a television show or you watch a movie, and someone is taking a, a drink of water or a drink of milk, and they hear something that is uh, either funny or, um, or interesting, or maybe some of the water goes down the wrong pipe in their throat, and then the, the body's natural reaction is to spew it all out, uh, like milk running out of your nose when you're trying to laugh too hard. You, you just have this very strong, forceful uh, ejection of, of this water or whatever you're drinking. 
That is basically what God does to lukewarm Christians. He spews them out of his mouth like uh, water going down the wrong pipe. It's just a, a, a reaction that, hey, I want this out. I don't like this anymore. And so it is an incumbent upon us as Christians, part of our marching orders, to share that uh, which God has so graciously given unto us. When we go through our daily lives, we should ever be watchful for an opportunity to share with uh, other people. As, uh, as an automotive instructor, I sometimes speak to some of my technician students who are also my friends. Uh, they come to me with uh, questions that are not related to fixing cars. Sometimes they come to me with questions uh, about life and, and uh, interpersonal relationships. And they ask for my advice and give me the opportunity to be able to witness of God's goodness and God's grace. There is um, a vocal coach that uh, I occasionally uh, uh, will, will watch uh, on uh, YouTube. And this vocal coach does critiques of various singers, uh, of their technique, of their, their vocal range, their styles, what have you. Uh, because as a vocal coach, it, it is her business, it is her livelihood to teach people how to sing and how to sing correctly. Uh, recently, I happened to watch uh, one of her vocal critiques, and it was of a, a song called Oceans that my, uh, my granddaughter sings uh, in church occasionally. Um, and, and this song was originally... Um, recorded by Hillsong United, which is the, uh, the, the singing ministry arm of the Hillsong Church in Australia. And what was interesting about this vocal critique is that it wasn't a critique at all. She actually used this particular song as an opportunity to witness to all of those who are part of her uh, vocal classes and those who uh, follow her vocal instructions uh, on the internet. She went on to share her personal testimony about this particular song, Oceans, and how during a period of deep emotional torment, where she was uh, going through a, a very difficult and bitter divorce that she did not want, uh, she was trying to extricate herself from a um, violent and abusive marriage, that the words of this song provided a, a message that gave her hope and gave her comfort. She would uh, listen to this song multiple times a day. She even said she had it on loop uh, uh, in her home, that she would listen to it repeatedly in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, for the better part of a year, and would listen to this song and would take comfort from the message that God was giving her through this song and through her prayers and through the, the gift of music. God has healed her heart and has uh, also given her... Um, a new relationship, a better relationship, uh, a, a gentleman who loves her in spite of her brokenness, uh, a gentleman who loves her son even though he did not participate in the creation of this boy. And she went on to proclaim the goodness of God, the grace of God, the faithfulness of God, using her platform for music vocals as 
a platform to share the truth about the love of God with, with those who uh, have occasion to listen to her. Now, it is not our job to save these people. It's not our job to judge them. This is God's job. That's, that's what He does. Christ told us that He came to seek and to save. That's His job. He doesn't need us, but He wants us because He wants us to um, share in the benefits of salvation. He wants us to share in, the, in His glory by winning other people to Him so that they can be His friends as well. There's a, a, a preacher that I listen to occasionally. When I go to work in the morning, I'll turn on the radio in my truck. And every morning around oh, 6.45 or so, um, this particular preacher who uh, almost 30 years ago uh, went to sleep in the Lord, Dr. Robert Cook has a, um, you know, a little five or ten minute devotion every morning that I listen to. And his opening remarks to, to those who listen, he asks them, how in the world are you? And that's how he opens up his program every single day. How in the world are you, my dear radio friend? And that particular question struck me uh, in, in two ways. One is, how are you doing? That's the, the, what, the, uh, what we uh, envision first, him saying, how are you doing? What's up with you? Are you doing okay? And then I'm reminded of a, a whole series of scriptures where... God tells us we are in this world, but we are not of this world. So when I hear that question, how in the world are you? Are you in the world? Are you of the world? Or are you in the world, but are you of a different world? Are you of heaven, which is where we should be? And so... Dr. Cook will go on through whatever his presentation is for, the, for that morning. And he will always close with, um, with this little uh, brief message. Walk with the king and be a blessing. Don't just wait to receive a blessing, but be a blessing that somebody else may be waiting for. And by us being blessings to others, God is providing us with an opportunity to witness, either witness in word or witness in deed. The lives that we live, everything that we come across, everything that we uh, experience, this whole journey that we call life is to equip us to help other people in their journey. There, there's a phrase that, that goes something like, uh, you don't know how a man lives until you've walked a mile in his shoes. And when we have the experiences that we have, uh, some things I'm good at, some things I've experienced, and I have an opportunity to share my experiences. Other people have other experiences that I don't, which makes them better uh, equipped to be a witness in those particular areas. We're able to use the things that we have experienced and endured as a means to witness to others who are going through those exact same things and to be a voice of reason and a voice of hope a voice of compassion and, a, and lead them to the truth about God and, and His love and His grace. By us giving of ourselves helps us to grow. Grow spiritually, grow emotionally, 
and grow in our relationships to others. All of these people that we encounter, that we uh, help along the way, some we may remember, some we may not remember, but they will remember. And as they say their daily prayers and conversations with God, they will remember us in their prayers and uh, we will be blessed as we have blessed them. What is our motivation for doing this? Is it we're, we're, we're doing all this because we want something? Or are we doing this because we love God? Which is what the reason should be. Our faithfulness to God in reaching out to others to lift them up, to give them uh, a helping hand, uh, a, a shoulder of comfort, uh, a, the hand of strength. We're faithful to God's command to go out into the highways and the byways to, to, uh, to seek the lost and, and to bring other people into the fold. Not out of obligation, but out of love. I'm doing this because I have to. Well, that's the wrong reason. I'm doing this because I love God and I want to do this. I want to please God with my life. It doesn't mean that you can't you know, enjoy the things of life, that you can't go out and enjoy um, a, a car ride or enjoy a baseball game or uh, go out on the, on the ocean or on a lake uh, in a boat and go fishing or, or whatever. Um, you can still certainly enjoy those things. Those are not sinful. Uh, those are things that, are, that they give us peace. They give us joy and relaxation. But we witness out of our love for God because of what He's done for us. Every thing that we have, everything that we are, is because of Him. His grace was shown to us through His death. He died for us we should be willing to live for Him. And that is not an original quote by me, hardly. Uh, I borrowed that from, from somebody else that, who has said that, and I'm sure they didn't originate the phrase either. But it's nonetheless true. God died for us, so we should live for Him. Not out of obligation, but out of love because of what He did for us. When we, as a church body, are gathering together in church to worship, we need to be very, very careful about our outward Christian lives. People see church as a meeting place for Christians, when the church actually should be a hospital for sinners. Um, this is where sinners need to be so that they can hear the word about God and take th these words of, of, of love and compassion and forgiveness to heart so that their spirits can be healed, so that their hearts can be healed, so that their lives can be healed. They need to be here, and the only way they're going to get here is through us. Uh, there's also, I've, I've heard the phrase a long time ago, that those Christians who are so heavenly minded are of no earthly good. And it kind of pains me to hear that, but it's true. There are Christians who think nothing more than getting to heaven. I'm getting to heaven. I'm getting to heaven. I'm doing whatever I can to get to heaven. And they're of no use to those around them who don't even know about heaven. If we truly want to go to heaven, we want to take as many people with us as we can. And bringing them 
here into the, um, let's just call it the spiritual hospital, shall we? Where they can hear the, the word of truth, where they can be greeted with fellowship and the, the handshake of love, a, 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 a good, warm Christian hug. And hi, welcome to this sanctuary. Welcome to this house of God. How in the world are you? Welcome to the house of God, where you are among friends. That is our responsibility as Christians, as followers of Christ. To be partakers of His mission, to be His friends, as God mentioned about Abraham. God came out and said, straight-faced, Abraham is my friend. I want God to say of me, this is my friend, David. He wants to say of you, this is my friend. So, we as Christians, please bear in mind what our mission is. We're not to judge. And we certainly can't save anyone. But we can participate be partakers of the gift, sharers of the gift, and be fishers of men. Go out and bring them in. Um, there's a, a, a song that the Gaither Vocal Band does. And it's a, it's a um, I mean, Southern Gospel is, is, is my kind of music. Because I grew up listening to Southern Gospel, because I, I am a Southern boy. And the, 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 the song goes um, basically uh, along these lines. Um, I catch them and God cleans them. Talking about being fishers of men. I will go out and catch them, the uh, men and women, bring them to the house of God and let God clean them inside and out. And only He can do that. And if we don't go out fishing, people are going to die, and they're going to uh, go into eternity lost. God wants to take as many people home with Him as, as we can bring to Him. Our love for God equals our love for the things that He loves. And what God loves is mankind. So our love should be for mankind as well, for their spiritual well-being, for their physical and emotional well-being. If we are to be like Christ, we are to share the same desires that He does, and that's the desire for people. As we go through these next 13 weeks, picking up tidbits of information and, and pieces of truth. It is my prayer that we all go out and make friends for God. Again, uh, this is David Smith from the Fairmont Seventh-day Adventist Church in Lodi, California, wishing you a happy Sabbath and a very happy, healthy, and safe Independence Day. God bless you.